Van der Merwe, Keane and Habib. Damso Jr. surprised everybody once again by holding down a top 10 position. There were 10 stages to be run on Saturday, eight around the Caledon area before the rally heads back for the finish at the Belleville Sports Stadium. to do before the start of the day's first stage and others encountered problems en route to the first stage. Jim, not a good start for the day. Unfortunately not Steve. Uh, the problem we experienced yesterday with the performance of the car, we thought it was the charging system. Um, it wasn't. It seemed to be the fuel pressure. The fuel pressure regulator was playing up so lads have changed that now but it's hasn't cured the problem, so it looks like the fuel pumps. So unfortunately, the car is not going very well. An all too familiar sight, the Castrol Toyota leading the field. So far this season, Damso and Bonafide have led after each regroup. As Supervan made the 80s his, so Damso has made the 90s his. The early morning stages were pretty rough. Lawrence demonstrates the importance of a sump guard. The faster stages of day two gave the Daewoo's an advantage over Lawrence, and Sorrel started edging ever closer to second place. Keane also found the stages more to his liking and was giving the team leader a run for his money. Watching Hubbock storming through the forests, you could be forgiven for not knowing that his car's handling wasn't up to scratch. Young Damso was looking for another top six finish and started the day cautiously. After replacing a clutch before the start, Van der Velt was back on pace and was chasing Hubbock for Formula 2 honours. While technicians were removing lights, Sorrel had some explaining to do. Sorrel, you lost a minute on the stage. Yeah, we had a spin and we spoiled the car and uh, it took me that long to start it again. And then, I couldn't find it. then I couldn't find the reverse and all sorts of things went wrong. Despite the effects of flu, Piazza Musso was starting to press on. A good opening day saw Christo Ackerman and Menno Havala move into the top 10 and challenge for a top 3 placing in Class S18. But the local UNO crew of Diffie Murray and Donny Duval were going like the clappers in Class S19 and opening up some eyes in the process. Krabla and Burroughs had lost a bit of time on the opening day and were fighting back strongly on these fast open stages. reveling on these stages. Who said local knowledge doesn't count for much? Robbie, welcome to South Africa and explain why you're here. Well, I got an invitation from Enzo to come out and see this rally. Uh, it was going to be the first one with our new Formula 2 cars uh, this year with the brand new cars and I, I thought it would be a good opportunity to come and see what South African rallying has been like. It's about four years since I've been here on a rally and it's certainly shaping up quite nicely. Stage 10 proved to be eventful and featured the infamous and spectacular water splash. The graceful art of four-wheel drifting, courtesy of Toyota, Serge and Vito. Our in-car camera shows just how hard Damso is trying. Lawrence was trying hard to keep the bigger engine cars behind him and almost threw away all his hard work. was fast. Maximum RPM and into fourth gear. And fifth. That's over 180 kilometers an hour. This rally was proving to be very competitive. This is Sorrel in maximum attack mode on his way to the fastest time. And Enzo following his tracks. Hubbick 
Coast Gulf suffered the effects of a bar wave. Chart van der Volk moved up a place. That's Pierre Aris warning him of danger. And that's J.P. Denso's conquest upside down, blocking the road and out of the rally. The hardships of full ball rallying were starting to take its toll on machinery. Enzo, that was a difficult stage for you. Yes, about halfway through the stage, I just heard this, this very bad noise, and I thought, oh no, the engine's blown on me. But, um, and I started watching oil pressures and temperatures, looking for the fault, but um, I cruised through the rest of the stage and uh, found the exhaust broke off right at the engine, so I'm happy to see that at least. <laughs> Not the engine, we can continue. Stage 12 was another fast affair, and Piazza Musso was third fastest and starting to move up the order. Ackerman and Havala, Murray and Duval, and Hrabla and Burroughs were still fighting for a place in the top ten. Huerta and Yodan were still leading the group in runners and looked set for a class win. Etienne, problem for you? Yeah, I was waiting for it to come. Luckily jumped off in the stage, a uh, coil wire across the 32nd. Uh, plus the starter motor doesn't work and we haven't got the spare, we've used that as well. We had to push it, so it cost me 30 seconds. And now Enzo has closed the gap considerably, so now I have to really go for the last few. Stay ahead. Another popular stage on this event is the farmyard and Damso was in full flight. to Sarl, Lawrence and Paisley were working hard trying to keep ahead of a charging Enzo Keen and Yanni Habig. and never lets up his pace. Keane and Hodgson were going 10-10s in pursuit of the Lawrence Paisley conquest and a possible podium finish. Hubbick is another entertaining driver. This is rallying at its best. respite at the lunch halt and the Daewoo chef Nick Bates was very popular. Back to the action. Van der Waalt was steadily closing the gap on the Formula 2 leaders Habeck and Judd but was beaten on this stage by Piazza Musso who was enjoying the faster stages proving that the escort will be a force to be reckoned with once new suspension bits arrive. and Hrabla in class S18 was being hotly contested. Both drivers were on the limit, but one went over it. Help was soon on hand, but they dropped to fourth in class as fellow golf crew Willem Lowe and Johan Barnard took third. The final stage was stage one in reverse direction. For Damso and Bonafide it was a formality as they took the Toyota Conquest to another dominant win. Lawrence was a mere five seconds ahead of Keane at the start of the stage, but it was Van der Merwe and Boshoff who emerged fastest. 
Rangers were on Keane. Could he snatch third? It was not Keane's day. A broken side shaft 700 metres into the stage cost him a shot at third. Still, it had been a superb battle. place and the Formula 2 honours went to Habeg and Judd as Van der Waals settled for sixth with Piazza Musso less than a minute behind after winning the final stage. Moray and Duval wrapped up class S19 while Boerta and Jordan bagged 10th and the group N win. Ackerman and Havelaar still managed 11th overall after their role while Ben and Isabel van der Vestesen in their group N debut made sure the manufacturer had a 100% finish record. Volkswagen dominated the manufacturer's challenge, followed by Toyota, with Daewoo making their presence felt. Serge, well done. There was another remarkable win. Yes, I must say I really enjoyed this event. And uh, on Friday we really tried hard to open a gap. And uh, while everybody was trying to sort themselves out, and uh, it paid the end. So today we had quite a clean run and we kept it together while the last three guys having a, a good go at each other. So it was nice and interesting to watch.